Jocko, had an incident I wanted your opinion on. I love your book and podcast. Always listen and apply your lessons to my life, job, and family. I was driving home one night with my wife and four-year-old son in the car when some drunk idiot was walking in the middle of the roadway. He stood in front of my car, refusing to move, running his mouth. My wife begged me not to get out of the car. The guy reached, in his front, reached into his front waistband like he had a gun. And, all, and although myself being a police officer and having countless incidents and experience like this, I didn't feel he did. More like drunken bravado or grandstanding. In any case, I was, I was armed. And having trained in boxing and a little bit of jujitsu, felt I could have handled the situation. This lasted about a minute of him standing there, and eventually I just drove around him while he was running his mouth, calling me names and all that stuff. My first priority, obviously, is getting my family home safely and making sure nobody will ever do any harm to them. But another part of me felt like, what am I teaching my son? I mean, is that okay? Um... You know, is that okay to let people disrespect you and act any way they want towards you? So I dropped off my uh, so I dropped off my family and went back looking for the guy. He was gone. I guess lucky for me as well as him. I'm questioning my decision not out of ego, but only because of the example I want to be to my son. That you never go looking for trouble and confrontation, but you don't back down from it either. Ever. <clears throat> okay. Well, just first of all, <clears throat> you won. Mm -hmm. you, just so you know, you won. You got a wife and a kid. Yeah. You won. Right? So, options. What are the options here? Well, for one, if you're a police officer, you could call the police. You could, you know, on, get on your radio and call them to say what's going on and have this guy arrested before he causes an, a, an actual accident being out in the road like an idiot, being out in the road like an idiot. So that's an option. But, but the other thing is like, what are you trying to teach your son? Are, are you trying to teach your son that he should fight every idiot that offends him? <laughs> <laughs> He's, if, you, if that's what you teach him, he is not going to have a very productive life or a very nice life. So there's too many negatives, right, that can happen there. This actually happened. to Something similar to this happened to me a little while ago. I was down by the ocean, down by the pier in the neighborhood where I live, and there was a, like a tweaker, crazy, you know, drunk on drugs and all that. And it, was, it wasn't as direct as this. He wasn't, he wasn't saying anything at me. But he's yelling swear words and, and he's in front of my kid. My kid, this is when my son was probably six or seven years old. Mm. And he's just alone. He's isolated, but he's swearing and just acting crazy, right? And what I did was I said to my son, okay, you see this guy right here? Have you heard of what drugs are? This is what drugs do to you right here. This, this guy, this is where it ends up. So this guy's a miscreant. He's a criminal. And the other thing I told him, I said, what if this guy attacks us? What do you think would happen? And my son was kind of, you know, well, you would choke him because my son trained jujitsu at that time. And he was, well, you would choke him. And I was like, that's right. I'm not afraid of this guy. We're not afraid of this guy. This is no factor because we know how to fight. We know how to defend ourselves. But that being said, what we want to do is we want to avoid this situation. You know, there's all kinds of all kinds of bad things that can happen there. You know, this I told my son, like this guy could have a knife. This guy could have a gun. This guy could have, this guy could just have a blood-borne disease, right? This guy could have a blood-borne disease. Now I go and get in a fight with him, and now I have a blood-borne disease. Yeah. What, 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 it, what it, that's horrible. That's a horrible situation. So, like I said, I told him that this is, this is why we train. This is why we know how to use firearms. Because when people are maniacs, and, and if they're insane and psychopathic, and they have weapons, you need to have a weapon yourself. You need to be able to defend yourself. So our pri this is what I teach my son. My primary objective is to be safe, right? To, to not get, to avoid these situations. And guess what? If you still feel the need to like be a man in the situation or prove that you're a man or prove to your son, that, which is valuable. I'm not trying to put that down. You want your son to see that, that, that you should be strong and that you should be able to stand up for yourself and that you will don't ever have to back down to anybody. But that's why your son comes with you to the gym. That's why he trains jujitsu. 
That's why you train jujitsu. That's why he watches you day in, day out, day out, working out, being strong, being tough, going to the gym, training with firearms. That's why he sees all that stuff. So he knows. I mean, I'll tell you right now, my kids, if you were to ask my kids like against a random person in the street, they would they basically think I could beat up anyone in the world. You know what I mean? That's what they think because that's, they see yes. me training all the time. Right? Mm-hmm. That's all they see me do. So so that's that. Now the disrespect part. He disrespected me, right? Mm-hmm. Disrespect and sometimes you know, disrespect me is one thing, but now you disrespect my wife. Mm-hmm. Right? Well, again, how can you be disrespected? And that's what I explained. I would explain to my son: you, you cannot dis, be disrespect, be disrespected by someone that has no respect for themselves. And if you are a drunk idiot in the street, you have no respect for yourself. You don't. You cannot disrespect me. It is impossible for you right. to give me disrespect. You don't even respect yourself as a human. Right. So, so that's just that's just that just doesn't even count. And I'll tell my son that all day long, or or any of my kids that all day long. You can't be disrespected by someone that doesn't even respect themselves. You know what? I am respect. I'm even respectful to this drunk idiot. Yeah. Giving him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. I am respect. So, you know, then the other piece is not backing down from trouble, right? And I'm not going to back down from trouble but i am going to avoid it (laughs) i'm going to avoid it and you know what trouble avoids me yeah it avoids me and if you are working out and you're staying strong and you have the confidence because you know you can handle yourself trouble is going to avoid you 99 percent of the time and the other thing is you got to tell your kids i mean my my son is getting older now if he gets in a fight with someone, he could kill him. I mean, that's just straight up what could happen. And so now I've got to, and, and you know, he's a young kid, so he's got to, he's got to do the things that you're talking about in this question. Prove yeah. himself. Yeah. And prove that he's not going to back down. I was, I got to explain to him. Listen, let me tell you what comes with getting in a street fight: a cool rush because it's fun, right? It's fun. So you get that. Maybe you get a little bit of props. You get a little bit of respect yeah. from the from the. You get a cred, right? Some street yeah. cred from your people. Yeah. Let me tell you what else comes with it. Along with those two things, which are which are cool, right? Possible jail time, possible injuries, possible lawsuits, the broken hand. I mean, even if it's just okay, those are the big ones, right? Jail time, which there's been plenty of cases where there was a case here in San Diego. Guy punched another guy, fell in the curb, dead. Died. Right. Yeah. Uh, th- those things really happen. Oh yeah. Not to mention, you could get you know, so you get jail time, you get an injury. Not not to mention you could get killed, right? Because you think you're a tough guy. Guess what? The greatest MMA fighters in the world get caught with a crack in the face and they get knocked out. You fall down and hit a curb. You you could die. So there's, there's that aspect too. But then you get to the injuries, right? Because you get in a street fight, you're going to get some kind of an injury. You're going to get some kind of an injury. It's just going to happen. You know, whether it's just a little cut or a little abrasion, you're going to have something. That's a pain. It could be a major injury. You could break your hand. That happens all the time. Lawsuits. Because now you're going to get sued. Now they're coming after you. And if it's just a stupid thing like a ripped jacket or a scuff knee, it just isn't worth it. It isn't worth it, especially because we're talking about an individual that you can crush in an instant and that has no value as a human. This guy, what this person's doing, yeah. right? None. This person is an idiot. Don't go down to their level and play that game. Instead, avoid that and go to the gym and train more and be ready. Yeah. That's my opinion. Good job on walking away, going out to find the guy. Luckily, you, you already said luckily you didn't find him. Yeah. Because right now, who knows? Maybe you'd be the guy that's on you going to jail. The cop that, oh, you're a cop and you were armed and you went and got in a fight with this guy and you pulled your weapon because you were losing and you shot him. And then what do we see? We see somebody that had a cell phone and they recorded the whole thing and they see you pushing this guy around. Yeah. It's not a good situation. And you got to be ultra responsible when you're carrying. Ultra responsible when you're carrying. You know that. We all know that. When yeah. we carry, we got to avoid. That's that's what we have to do when we're packing. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and you can kind of tell when, when someone's scared 
you know, when like if this guy and a guy in the street and you're in the car, that's a, I don't know. That seems real obvious. You drive around and you go home. But, it's, you know, if someone's like get it, like if you're walking on the sidewalk and he gets in your way, that's, you know, it's kind of different or whatever. But avoiding the situation. Yeah. And you're not scared because you prepare to whatever and you you simply walk around or go the other way or something like that. The people with you, they can tell they can tell you're not scared. You can tell you're making the right decision, but if you are scared, whether you fight the guy or you run away scared, they can tell that too. Yeah. So I had another situation the other day. I was walking down the street with my whole well, oh yeah, with, with my whole family. Thing. Okay. Going to get some ice cream. It was it was a couple months. ago. It was in the summertime. Going to get some ice cream. Hell yeah. I had a discipline disciplinary breakdown in my own mentality, and we sure. were going to get ice cream. Sure. <laughs> so we're walking down the street, and out of nowhere, this guy just gets in my, like stood up and got in my face, like really fast. And I, I, I just kind of looked at him and sort of did the, you know, in, into the um, semi, not a full on fight stance, but I turned, you know, like a quarter turn and just looked at him. Cause I thought, okay, we're gonna rock and roll. We'll, we'll make this happen. And it, almost instantly what happened that you just described happened. As soon as the guy got in my face, he like immediately, within one, within a half a second, immediately backed down and, and walked away. It was like he was just trying to prove something, and then he realized really quick he was going to get crushed. Yeah. But anyways, that's the same thing. You know, the yeah. guy could tell. Oh, you want to fight? <laughs> you know. Did I ever yeah. tell you that story about Hoyler? Hoyler Gracie. Hoyler told me this story, and I guess you know Hoyler's a really good surfer, yeah. and Hoyler was out surfing at a spot. In San Diego, and you know, San Diego, like all surfing areas, is is pretty um territorial. territorial. And there's some there's some there's some aggression yeah. in the surf. For sure. And anyways, some guy started getting aggressive with with Hoyler, and Hoyler said to him some classic line. It was something along the lines of, "Hey man, you surf for a living, I fight for a living. If you want to go to the beach, let me know. Otherwise." Be quiet. <laughs> I thought that was a great line. <laughs> Nicely done, Hoyler. <laughs> Brad, this time we went on. But it's the same. You know, Hoyler's small. For those of you who don't know who Hoyler Gracie is, Hoyler's a small, small guy. I mean, he's a, obviously a master of jiu-jitsu, but he's only 150 pounds, 155 pounds maybe. Really yeah. small guy. And, and he's a nice guy. So he's not mm-hmm. a guy that he's not a guy that's going to be intimidated. He's not. He's not. His looks are not going to intimidate anybody. I don't even think yeah. he has cauliflower ears. I mean, it's just, he just looks like a nice guy. Normal and he is yeah. a nice guy. And he's got a nice presence about him. Yeah. So what I'm saying is what, again, to reinforce what you just said, when someone is confident to that level, yeah. even though they're 145 or 150 pounds and look like a nice guy with a smile on their face, when you confidently say, look, you know what I do for a living? I fight. If you want to go to the beach and fight, let me know. Yeah. And the guy says, oh, you know what? I'm good. Yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. good. I'll just leave you alone. That yeah. sounds like a plan. Yeah. The, the the little detector goes off like danger, you know? Yeah. Danger. I'm going to get my ass beat. Yeah. But and some but some guys are, as far as decision making goes, some guys are crazy, you know? Where, like how you said, like if they're like on drugs or this guy in this case, if he's in the middle of the road acting like, you know, boys in the hood kind, we got a problem here kind. That's what he said he was doing. Like, he's obviously off, you mm-hmm. know? Like, he's not a decision maker kind of thing. Yep. So, you know, if you jump into a situ- situation with him, it's kind of unpredictable in that weird way, you know? Yeah, let me tell you something else. Let's say the guy has a gun or doesn't have a gun. You had the moment to get away from him. Yeah. If you thought if you had a yeah. gun, you get away from him, right? Let's say you said, oh, you know what? I'm going to confront him right now. So you, you let's say you get in a shootout, you kill him. Guess what you got to do now? You gotta hire a lawyer. You gotta hang up. You gotta take a, a yeah. break from work because you're a cop. There's all these things. It's yeah. so not worth it. It's just a pain yeah. in the ass, yeah. is what it is. It's almost like, I mean, maybe I'm wrong here, but it's almost like you can't really like what what's the thing? What's the goal we're going for? Mm, you yeah, know, back we, to the back to the out, first question of the day. Yeah, <laughs> what's the yeah, what's, what's your what's reason? Your why? What would yeah. be your reason for doing this? Yeah, like I'm gonna go out and um and I'm look for I'm gonna look for the guy. But then, like, what's the goal? Like, what's the out? Like, what are we going for there when yeah. we go look for him to tell him not to do that again, or yeah. to what to arrest well, him? He, yeah, he's or... going out to kick his ass, I believe. Right. <laughs> That's what's going on? Yeah, and then even that, you don't. A lot of times, we don't. I know when you're in that moment, you don't think past that. You're just like, I gotta get my whatever, my revenge. Really, is what it is. He shouldn't have done that to me. I'm gonna go teach him a lesson, kind of a thing. I mean, that's the feeling. Anyway. Yeah. I don't know. 
Yeah, but guys are weird, man. You can't jump into that weirdness. Yeah. Just go home you, with your family and watch When TV. the confrontation happens, the best case scenario isn't good. The best case scenario is good. Oh, yeah, good. if you jump like in the, there. No, yeah. Just the best case scenario that's going to happen, yeah. it isn't good. Yeah. Because you got, even if you walk up and knock the guy out with one clean punch, you got a, you got a broken finger. You know, you got a broken knuckle. Yeah. Even if you walk up and choke the guy, you got his grimy puke all over. You know what I mean? It's just, yeah. there, there, there's nothing that good is going to come out of it. Yeah, and ooh, ooh. other than it feels good to fight, yeah, but, yeah. but that can easily be remedied by going to the gym and fighting all your yeah. buddies. And in this case, I don't know. You know, this guy, oh, you you knocked out a weird homeless guy in the in the middle <laughs> yeah. of the road in yeah. front of your family? Like, I don't see how that's yeah. cool. Yeah. You know, that. I mean, maybe, I don't know if that would feel good. I don't think so. Yeah. But, yeah, it's kind of weird. This one time we went on this cruise, and it was me, Terry, Tim. You know, he's mm-hmm. got, like, Terry's huge. Yep. Like, I'm kind of big or whatever. Tim and our, our girlfriends, this guy was behind us in the booth. We were at a restaurant or something. And um, we were like, whatever. I guess the booths were flimsy. So mm-hmm. we were shaking the booth. He was behind us. He got up all crazy. He's like, hey, God. He's, he, what did he say? He said, hey, yeah, you guys are big, but you guys keep knocking the booth. We're going to like basically call this out to a fight. He had like tattoos everywhere on his neck and mm-hmm. stuff. And at first I was like, man, is this guy joking? Like, or like what's going on? I was confused. And to be honest, I was like stunned, like almost like I didn't, this scenario was so foreign to me. I was stunned. I didn't even know, even know what to say. I don't even know what everyone else was doing. That's how stunned I was. But then Tim, he was kind of used to that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So he was like, is this guy serious right now? He just jumps in. He, he like stands up, goes to fight him. But the guy was a weirdo. That's mm-hmm. the thing. It was like all of us big guys, you know? And Tim was like, he wasn't scared. Oh, he was ready to like fight. So he gets in his face. They're, face, they're about to fight. We're on a cruise, by the way. We're fighting. You can't fight on a cruise. No. So it's this big scene, you know? And the guy, like, he was like, I don't know, I guess he was ready to die or something. Because he was, like, kind of down to fight. And guys came and, like, I think broke it up or whatever. We had to make this big report. It was, like, this big thing. So it was all just a pain in the ass is basically what we're saying. Exactly right. (laughs) And I'm And I'm saying, like, what if we fought that guy, you know? Yeah. Taught him a lesson. Or yeah. what if Tim fought him? Yeah, or then whatever. Tim's getting arrested and yeah. they got a lawsuit against Bro, him. And we were on a cruise. Yeah. Now we got to go someplace. Exactly. Yeah. It's all stupid. Yeah, yeah. Don't do that kind of stuff. 